everyone. My name is Devdesh. I'm from Global Environment Center. Okay, most of them actually, um, they briefed you about what all progress they're doing, right? We want to focus more on your personal action. That is what we do. Um, we have this main program that's known as River Ranger and Smart Ranger program. Okay, what do you mean by River Ranger and Smart Ranger? Do you know how do you actually pollute the environment? Do you care for your drain? Most of the time, people don't realize that your drinking water comes from the river and the drain is actually linked to the river and you actually start polluting the drain. So, these are the progress that we do. When we say river ranger, how do we actually educate the communities and the schools on the river ranger program? We actually teach them to be the eyes and the ears of the... Who do, who's responsible for the river in Malaysia? Anybody? Sorry? Anybody can answer the question? All of, us. All of us, yes, but most of us will say it's Department of Irrigation and Drainage. <laughs> or we will say the local council is uh, responsible for it. Okay, so what we do? We do programs with smart partnership. When we say smart partnership, smart partnership, what do we mean by smart partnership? We link the government agencies, the corporates, the schools and the communities together in our program. Most of our programs are corporate funded. So they will fund certain programs at certain areas or certain uh, aspects to cover, maybe on base or on river. So when we have river program, some of the projects that we have is more on the river of life, public outreach program. Uh, we also program on the Sungai Penchala, Sungai Bay. So what we do? We educate the community. What you can do at home, you don't have to go to a big scale activity. What you as a human being can do? How you can stop polluting the river? Do you know that you are actually uh, contributing to the pollution by washing your oily stuff in the zinc? It goes to your drain. You don't realize all these things that you're doing. Do you know why you need to separate the waste? Yes. Why? Recycling. Why do we need to recycle? Do you know that most of our waste ends up in the landfill and in another five years we won't have any more landfills? So that's why we're actually trying to recycle. And is recycling is very important in Malaysia? No? Why? What is actually causing this people's attitude? It's people. Our own attitude. We don't want to change. Okay, they have already implemented the uh, waste separation program. How many of you are separating waste? Seriously? Okay. Do you wash your bottles before you recycle? Yes. Do you wash your plastic containers? How many of you are still using styrofoam? How many of you are still using styrofoam? Yes. Why? Lazy. So, it's our attitude. So, what is the main cause? It's attitude. Okay, now they are doing the separation. Do you think the people who are collecting it are doing it properly? Uh, let's say the local, uh, local concern are collecting it properly? Because they don't know how to collect the rubbish. Because the people at the top agency doesn't really inform them how to do it. How do you actually collect the rubbish? So, it's an issue. So, do you actually just dump it outside or do you actually recycle and send it to a recycling vendor? To a recycling vendor. So you have to do your part. If you just separate it and leaving it to the local concern to do it, they don't do that. So you have to play your part in helping the environment. So how are you going to do it? Water conservation is another aspect. Do you actually conserve your water? How many of you do rainwater harvesting? Rainwater harvesting? Do you need to uh, fix a gutter system to collect the rainwater? Can you use the pail to collect the rainwater? Yes, but how many of us are doing it? How many of us are using the rainwater to wash your backyard or the, uh, your, to water the plants? Yes, um, how many of you are doing composting? Do you know what is composting? <laughs> yes. We fail to realize that all the small things that we can do at home have a major impact on the environment. When we do composting at home, we are actually we go for the organic plants and organic organic vegetables and most of the kind of things we buy from outside. How sure are you it's organic? 
Why don't you do your own planting at home? You can start that, right? So that is your personal action. When you say personal action, you can do. You don't have to go and get two hundred people to do a green initiative. You can do it at home. Start it small. And when you say outreach, what do you mean by outreach? So like what she shared just now, neighbors are doing. When you outreach, you outreach to your neighbors, outreach to your friends. When you start small scale, it will end up in bigger scale. So how many of us wants to do it? How many of you are here to actually change your lifestyle? Or is it just a, like a one day lesson and then that's it, two hours lesson, then go back and you're doing nothing out of it? How many of have you have seen a leaky pipe and have actually complained to the management? Yeah, so how many of you have just ignored it? Okay, nobody wants to say that. Okay, go to R and R. Most of the time, you'll just see they dump the rubbish, or even the pipes are not closed properly. How many of you actually go and stop and close that? Okay, that's good. But most of us will just look at it. Oh, okay, it's all right. Slowly. How many of you actually sat in a food court and you try to segregate your waste? Or most of you will just dump it on the table, just leave it as is. How many of you actually? There is a rubbish bin there. You can just help them to put it, right? Do you all do that? Yes. Okay, these are the personal actions that we try to link up in our programs. When we say this kind of programs, SMART stands for Start Managing All Resources Today. When you say all resources, there are various resources that are involved. But our focus in GC, especially on River Care Program, we focus more on river management, water conservation, and also on waste management. These are the three things that we are looking at. So when we have this kind of funders coming in, we do engagement with the communities and the schools. And we don't really say that you have one to achieve for 200 or 300 people. We go for very small scale. For every year, we only target around 20 communities or 10 schools. But do you know that you can't sustain the program within a year? There are a lot of complications. Teachers' involvement, students' involvement, parents' involvement, even the community's involvement. To sustain a program, you need to do minimum three years. It's minimum. It can, and for us to change our attitude, it will take at least 60 years for us to have a full cycle. To change everyone's attitude. You might be thinking, oh, I'm doing recycling, I'm doing this waste management program, I'm taking care of my drain. But my neighbor is not doing it. Why bother? Let's go back to our old attitude. How many of you have planned that? Let's go back to our old attitude. We don't have to bother about the environment. If each of us thinks like that, we won't be able to achieve what we are trying to do in future. Let's start small. Start at your home. That is what we in GEC are doing. So I think today we'll be learning more. You you have already um, you should know how to do your composting, how to do your garbage and then how to also educate your... You don't have to go for educate those who are at your place, at your house, residential area. Start small. Then you will be able to do something big. Not now, maybe in three years time, five years time. So that is what we in GC are trying to do. So I just focus on this slide because it has already shown what we are doing in the communities. I don't want to go like each slide, each program. So if you look at this, we have our water project. It's more on the river rehabilitation. We actually tackle the projects, uh, the programs on how do we actually tackle the wetland, sorry, wet markets. How do we actually uh, solve the issues on silage waste, wastewater, and we also have this wetland planting. How do we actually have the cleansing agent? that they cleanse the river by themselves, and also on how do we conserve water among the school students, because education has to start small, at a young age. We can't simply change those for 80 over years to say, stop throwing, it will take time. But when we start at a younger age, it will have a better effect. That's what we are doing. Thank you.